Hi everyone, I'm John, uh, co-founder of Utima Inc, a protocol labs network uh, startup uh, working to uh, combine formal verification with zero knowledge proofs. Um, this concept of a formal proof embedded in a zero knowledge proof is something we're calling a zero knowledge type certificate or ZKTC and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's kick things off with my favorite topic, type theory. You know, I, I think everyone's had lunch, maybe feeling energetic for uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of type theory. Um, types are really important, though, uh, and it's at the heart of everything we do at Utima. Um, I hope I can give like a really quick summary um, and intuition to you guys on what they are and uh, why we're excited about them. And if there are any type theorists in the audience, I apologize, this is really hand wavy. Um, but okay, so, so first we have programs, which are like recipes or instructions for some kind of computation or constructing some kind of data. I think most people are familiar with programs. Um, but what I want you to try and imagine is a set, uh, the space of all possible programs. Not, so not just single programs, but um, different programs and how different programs are similar and how they're different um, and how we can categorize them and try to impose some kind of um, order on this um, infinite program space um, and how we can have guideposts so we don't get lost when we're trying to do very complicated things. Um, what's really cool about uh, types though is that, and I think this is the thing that distinguishes them from just any, any um, random description of um, programs is that types have a, a special program associated with them called a type checker that validates whether that type is correct or not. So in some sense, a type is a programmatic description of a program. Um, and you have this, this uh, special program called, let's call it check, that takes these claims that programs have types and tells you, okay, that's true, or no, that's false. Here's some simple examples. So addition and multiplication, both take two natural numbers and return a natural number. Um, so the same type, different implementations. Um, if we try to claim that addition takes uh, a Boolean, you know, if it's uh, add one true, then a good type checker should say no, that's, that doesn't make sense. Uh, in some type systems, you can do this with coercion, but we're pretending that doesn't exist for now. Uh, okay, so uh, more examples. Um, we have natural numbers. We can have types that are bounded natural numbers, so natural numbers between 0 and 255, or the type U64, which is natural numbers between 0 and 2 to the 64 minus 1. Um, we can also make list types, lists of lists, functions that do things over lists, all of that should be pretty familiar to uh, statically typed languages like Rust or Haskell, but there are systems that let us do something called dependent types and they let us go further and allow us to lift program values directly into the type system. So we can reason about specific programs and specific values that that, that, that program uh, produces, not just general properties like you might in, uh, in Rust. Um, and a dependent type checker, which is a very difficult kind of program to build, but that allows you to validate, for example, uh, that in the type system, that the result of your program has certain properties. Um, the really cool thing about this is that it's, it's such an amazing power that you can use dependent types to express any mathematical proposition. So, uh, on this slide, I have this type of the uh, Goldbach conjecture. Um, and it's a little bit of pseudocode, but it, um, it's, if you had a, a dependent type checker, that could actually validate that a proof of the Goldbach conjecture, which is unproven, was correct or not. Um, so this is the, the key idea from, I think, this entire uh, presentation. If, if you take one idea away, it's, it's really this, that Proofs and programs have this like, very like, special relationship to one another, and every structure in programming corresponds to a structure in math, and vice versa. Uh, and type checking that a program fits a certain type is exactly the same as, as checking that a mathematical proof demonstrates some proposition. 
So this is a, a, a famous idea called the Curry-Howard isomorphism, or proofs as programs, uh, and it's the key principle behind most formal verification. Uh, I have a corollary to this, though, which is the programmers as provers principle, um, and uh, it's this. All programmers are secretly mathematicians. So anyone uh, here who's ever written a line of code, I have good news for you. You are actually building a mathematical object. Okay, it's specialized, so maybe you didn't write down your theorems, or your types, or your documentation, but you did math. It, you can't escape that fact. And on the flip side, if you've ever written a proof, like in math class, like high school geometry, or in, in college, uh, that was actually programming. You might have been programming in your head, and you might not have actually written anything down, or written anything in a form that could actually execute, but it's still developing a formal language that in principle could be evaluated. Um, so there's a, a, an interesting symmetry here because programming often we're building these objects so we're kind of writing proofs but we're not writing the theorems that go with them and in mathematics math, math papers write down the types and the documentation of what are implicitly programs but don't give us the implementations. Enter Lean, which I think is the current best uh, example of a system that can try to unify those two sides of that symmetry. Um, Lean is a great interactive proof assistant with uh, powerful type inference, tactics, metaprogramming, and it's also a great functional programming language like Haskell. Okay, Haskell is not the most popular language in the world, but there are those of us who love it. Um, the key thing, though, about Lean is that it's being used by both actual professional, professional academic mathematicians to uh, formalize their work, and also by professional functional programmers to uh, build applications. Uh, so I, I'm really excited about Lean. Uh, it's a really cool system. I think everyone should look into it. It's one of the developments in computing over the last 10 years that I'm, I'm most excited about. Um, here's what it looks like briefly. Um, you have inductive data types, and this is a, uh, so this is the inductive data type of uh, natural numbers, and a uh, simple proof that uh, addition of naturals is commutative. And maybe this looks a little bit opaque and scary, but um, when you're actually writing this, you have uh, all the tools that you have in an IDE that surface a lot of the information from the type checker and compiler, and so the experience is actually uh, much gentler than um, writing a mathematical proof uh, on, on uh, paper. Um, and it, the uh, lean um, type checker ends up, the experience is like it's, uh, it ends up being a kind of mathematical exocortex because it keeps track of a lot of information um, for you that you don't have to uh, necessarily actively remember in your head. Um, there's a really large community around lean, um, roughly oriented around the goal of formalizing much of mathematics. And I, I find this really cool. Math is something that people have been doing for thousands of years. You go back to, to Euclid, right? That's recognizably math in the same way that, that we do math now with uh, your brain, uh, pen and paper, maybe papyrus in Euclid's case. And, um, but now we're, we're teaching computers how to do math and how to be a, an actual uh, part of that process of discovering new math and um, validating math that already exists. Um, and I think that's going to be just as transformative in mathematics as it's been in so many other fields. Um, and uh, just like Juan mentioned in his talk the other day, since math is underlying so much of what we're doing in technology, I think that that impact is going to uh, ripple um, up the stack. Uh, so MathLib is the lean mathematics library, and basically you should think of, of it as the corpus of all formalized math that uh, humanity has created. So uh, it's got hundreds of contributors, hundreds of thousands of theorems, um, and over a million lines of code. So it's a big project, it's growing uh, like crazy, and um, it's really cool to take some very complicated proof, run it on your uh, machine, and have the computer say, yes, this complex thing is true. Um, Lean's been used by professional mathematicians for research and, uh, and teaching. Uh, Kevin Buzzard, a mathematician at Imperial College, has uh, this really exciting Xena project 
to uh, put an entire undergraduate math curriculum in Lean. Uh, he has some really great talks about this that I encourage everyone to look up. Um, but uh, the key idea is that, uh, that, that he expresses over and over again is that um, by using Lean, it makes the experience of math education actually much more interesting for both the students and the professor because uh, when you're doing, um, I mean, you could imagine if we were all writing programs in our head all the time, I think many fewer of us would be able to contribute meaningfully to that discipline. So there's, there's a, a, a leveling that takes place, I think, when, when you uh, allow people to um, you know, write, uh, write math as code. Uh, another uh, mathematician, uh, Tom Hales, is uh, using Lean to formalize abstracts of various papers, um, and that has particular relevance to machine learning, which OpenAI is doing. And OpenAI has this, a fun project to uh, train a GPT-like model to automatically prove theorems, and they have some really impressive demos of uh, their system solving uh, some international math Olympiad problems, which are not trivial. Um, Lean also uh, has now some uh, significant funding behind it. Uh, the Carnegie Mellon just established a, the Hoskinson Center for Formal Mathematics, um, and so there's, uh, there's some institutional uh, momentum. Um, and uh, there's, there's some really cool uh, practical use cases um, where uh, Lean is, is uh, starting to, we're starting to build systems for um, verifying Rust programs. Um, sort of similar to how uh, C programs have been formally verified for you know, a long time. Um, and there's some work to prove uh, soundness properties for different uh, zero-knowledge uh, proof systems. And there are even now lean startups. Um, we're, so at Yatima, we're using lean for pretty much everything. Uh, we've implemented parsers, command line interfaces, we've implemented the Poseidon hash function, we've implemented an IPLD library with all of the dependencies, so multi-hash, multi-codec, uh, it's in there. Um, we're implementing a WASM interpreter, an EVM interpreter, um, and an implementation of the Nova ZK snark system that Lurk uses. Our implementation of Nova is not gonna be fast, it's not designed to be, it's designed to help us understand the, uh, the protocol and write some proofs. Um, so, Let's talk about ZK Snarks. Uh, this slide looks exactly like a slide that Chimei had, and I did not see his talk beforehand, but so I, we can we can skip this. But basically, from for our purposes, we don't have to worry uh, about what Snarks actually are. We just have to worry about two um, about this interface of two functions that they give us, which is prove and verify. So prove um, is general and uh, in turn complete protocols uh, generates a proof that some computation evaluates to a certain result, and it might be expensive. Verify takes that proof and gives us a Boolean if that result um, is true. And if it's not a good proof, then it'll say false. Um, so this is also kind of hand wavy, but I think at the sort of this level, it uh, is, is a good intuition. Um, so, let, but let's remember our type checker program. So the key thing about types is that we have an associated program that verifies whether the types actually match some program that we're working with. Prove is general over all programs. And check is a program. So what happens when we pass prove, when we pass check of some type signature into prove? So this sounds kind of mystical, but um, what we get is we get a zero knowledge proof that our type checker has returned some value. So you're writing some code, you, you're writing a Rust function, and you have a type signature, and you have some implementation, and the Rust compiler says, yes, your implementation matches a type signature. You return a U64. Um, with, in principle, you could take the entire Rust type checker, put it on a, a zero-knowledge proof system. I don't recommend you do this, but you could, and get a zero-knowledge proof that Rust uh, has returned uh, a, um, a proof uh, that Rust has, has type checked this program. Um, and then um, verify, once you have that proof, verify will be able to validate that in constant time. So you don't have to rerun the type checking operation. Right now, if you want to verify that some library, some unknown library, um, is type correct, 
what you have to do is you have to download the library, you have to download the, uh, the, the type checker, and you have to run the type checker against the library. There's no other alternative. You can trust someone else to do that, I, I guess, but if you want to really know that some, some library is type correct, you have to replicate the type checking operation. Um, so, if you, we can produce zero knowledge proofs of type checking operations, then um, we don't have to replicate, we don't have to do that kind of verification through replication. We can have um, a maybe more expensive prove operation, but we can ha be, then have um, really cheap and efficient um, uh, verification operations taking place um, sort of uh, whenever someone wants to validate that some library is type correct. Um, and that's what a ZKTC is. So a ZKTC is a type certificate, um, is a, is a, a uh, it's like a digital certificate that says this um, library, this program has passed this type checker. And to do that, of course, you need to content address the type checker, you need to content address the input, so there's a lot of detail that goes into making this work. But the intuition should be that um, just like you can get the result of a type checker by running it locally uh, on your machine, this lets you securely transport that result to anyone else without requiring them to perform the same operation, without requiring them to install the type checker, um, which can be a, sometimes a little bit of a, of a hassle. Okay, so what are we doing specifically? Um, I think, you know, we've sort of gone over the background. Specifically uh, for Yatima, um, we're doing lean ZKTCs with Lurk. So what does that mean? Well, we've implemented our own version of the lean type checker that does all that content addressing, um, and we have a compiler from lean to Lurk, and then we can run, we can pass our uh, lean, our self-hosted lean uh, type checker through our compiler and generate a lean type checker in Lurk. And then that lean type checker in Lurk, um, when a, a given specific inputs, can produce a Yatima ZKTC, which is a proof that some lean program correctly type checked. That could be a practical function that you wrote as part of a parser, or a web application, or it could be a complex theorem that's part of MATLAB. This is what our stack looks like. So MATLAB applications are implemented in lean. Um, we can run lean on, on WASM, potentially. Um, lean that then gets turned into our content address Yatima IR, which uses IPLD, um, and uh, then compiles to uh, Lurk, which then in turn uh, turns into proofs. Um, and we're hoping to uh, add uh, an F uh, FBM support for this so we can um, verify these Lurk proofs on Filecoin. Um, our current status, so content addressing works really well. Uh, there's some uh, changes that we want to do, I think, that'll more closely unite uh, Lurk native data with IPLD. Um, our type checker also uh, works, but uh, like all type checkers, it needs some TLC and some optimization. You can always make a type checker better. Um, and the compiler works, um, but we have a big uh, refactor planned to make it more efficient to use the functional commitments uh, that Chime talked about in his talk. And I think that's gonna be really exciting because then we can generate these proofs one by one for each definition. Um, and I think that's gonna be, that's gonna be really cool. Um, so, and we expect to have our MVP of this by the end of the year, maybe early next year. So really cool applications uh, that this opens up. Um, I gave a talk uh, earlier this fall um, about uh, how we can use this system to build a trust minimizing strongly typed software marketplace on top of Filecoin. Uh, essentially if we have uh, Lurk running um, on Filecoin, then um, people could publish um, types that they want someone else to implement and a bounty if they do and since it's dependently typed, those types can be arbitrarily specific. Or the the um, lean type system is Turing complete, so you can put any, any uh, description you want in there. And then if someone fills those types, um, implements your, specific, your typed specification, then they can claim the bounty without having to interact with you uh, thereafter. Um, and I think this could be a really um, interesting uh, new kind of thing that, that um, this system uh, enables. 
Um, also, I think that there's, there's a, a more mundane version of this, which is just using ZKTCs to uh, uh, prove that um, any input to, let's say, like, um, you know, a smart contract uh, API or web API um, is type safe. So you could have like a web server that, that says, well, I, I have an API, I need three arguments, I need a U64, a Boolean, and a string. And um, right now, I have to, my, my server has to validate arbitrary JSON that people can pass in, which is a pain, because then I have to do error handling, and I have to deal with the unhappy paths, and what happens if I hit one of those paths, and how do I you know, recover safely? That's not fun. So, um, but what you could do is you could say, well, I'm just gonna require my users to pass me ZKTCs that their inputs are correct. And because ZKTCs are general, I can actually add restrictions beyond just type safety. I could, um, you know, static type safety um, in the, the sort of Haskell and Rust sense. I could say that, well, I need, you know, the, that string to be non-empty. And you could do that very easily. Or I need this, uh, this U64 is only valuable, it's only valid between uh, a certain range. Um, and you could do that, like, very, uh, I think, easily with using, using lean. Um, but sort of, I think, in a, in a larger context, like what, what this will be useful for, or what, something really, like, like um, I guess, ambitious that we're trying to build, is that if we, if we think about like, Mathlib as like, this like, work product of like, the project to formalize all of math, um, how do we know that that project is correct? How do we know that all of math is right? Right now, we trust that the process of peer review, that mathematicians know what they're doing, and, that, and okay, that works pretty well, um, but wouldn't it be cool to have like a single zero-knowledge proof that you could verify in milliseconds on your phone that all of the results that all of our technology is built on is actually right, assuming that Lurk is right, but we could build, we could build proofs that like Lurk implementations are correct. There's, there's some, you know, Godel circularity there, so we do ultimately have to trust some things, but we should try to minimize, minimize that trust. Um, and I think in the future, what this is going to look like is that um, math as a human activity, as something people have been doing for, for a really long time, is going to start to look like what software development looks like now. And I think software development is going to start to look increasingly like mathematics, because I think as we start to use these sophisticated type systems, the way that we talk about our programs is going to use increasingly sophisticated mathematical structures. And if you write, if you, right now, if you write a Rust program and you have a typed, uh, a set of types that describe uh, how your program is supposed to work, um, this enum is, is valid inputs, you're really like, engaged in, in a kind of mathematical reasoning. Um, and I think that the closer these two uh, fields can come together, uh, the better. And that's the mission of Utima. We want to uh, help that ongoing unification. Um, we've got about 10 uh, engineers and mathematicians um, all over the world. And some of us uh, came from a pure engineering background, some of us came from a pure mathematics background, and we basically all work exactly the same way. It's, and it's really exciting to, to see uh, people that have never coded before um, actually like, do really, really great work. Some of our best engineers have never worked as engineers before, and that's, that's been amazing. Um, so we did uh, Y Combinator uh, in the Winter 22 batch, a Filecoin Foundation grantee, um, really excited about Lurk, really excited about Lean. Um, we have a whole bunch of repositories uh, and a Zulip, um, which you guys are all welcome to join. Um, and yeah, so questions. Hey, it's not really a question, it's more of a um, realization. Uh, I just noticed that um, you could use um, this um, zero knowledge for um, not only the type checker, but also the compiler. Yeah. So you could um, have a compiler um, and the, you know, the zero knowledge part would be like the code. So you can have like closed source. I don't know if this is good or not, right? But you, could, you can have like closed source uh, programs that you can prove that compiles to you know whatever, and also it has a type, right? So you yeah. can combine both, and I think that would be 
you know, really cool for like security and stuff, right? Safety. Yeah, so um, in my um, uh, ZKTC marketplace uh, talk, um, one of the possibilities this opens up um, with Lurk is that since you can also keep the inputs private to these proofs, um, what you can do is you can have a t uh, you, can, you can have this this uh, Lurk lean system um, with, with on top of Filecoin have a kind of um, uh, typed zero knowledge SaaS system where I commit to a specific function, I reveal the type of the function, maybe I reveal some theorems about the function, um, but I don't tell you what the function is, but I allow you to pass me inputs to the function and I give you the outputs and a proof that the outputs I'm giving you are actually the um, outputs from this specific function that I've, I've, I've done. So um, I think that could be really exciting from the compiler perspective. Um, there's a really uh, huge project called CompCert, which has been a, a, a formalization, a formalized C compiler, um, and that's just a, a massive project, really uh, impressive, um, very difficult. I think that with Lean and with stuff like Rust, we, there's maybe some um, easier paths that we could take, but I definitely think that if we can produce uh, uh, zero knowledge proofs of, of um, compiler output and theorems about compiler correctness, that would be a huge um, win for uh, safety and sanity uh, in the world of compilers. Yeah, right, thank you. Maybe first a silly question. Uh, if P, if, pro if a program is a proof and its type is the theorem, then uh, what is the execution of the program? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, so uh, the execution of the program um, can be something meaningful or it can be something not meaningful. It really depends on the theorem. So, like, if you have the identity function, right? The identity function is a useful function, right? Sometimes you, you need to, you know, pass you know, a function that does nothing but needs to just fill, fill an argument. Um, sort of like, you know, um, one as the multiplicative uh, identity. Um, so, but the, uh, the identity function is actually the uh, proof of the uh, proposition uh, modus ponens. So, you know, if P then Q, P then Q, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's it. Right. 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 It's it's a implies a. What is if p then then q? Um, no. The if p then q is application. If p then q is function application. Right. So so if p then q is is uh, right. Um, yeah. So so it turns out that that when you are going and constructing these terms, you come up with some uh, familiar looking things from programming that have this uh, you know uh, logical uh, meaning. Um, Yeah, Gabriel is my co-founder, so. <laughs> uh, I, I think you were asking about um, the execution of programs and proofs, right? Um, the execution of proof is proof simplification. So um, it takes uh, a proof that maybe is roundabout, like maybe you have a proof that, um, you have a proof of A, and then you have a proof of A implies A, and then you apply it, and then you know, it gets back you uh, a proof of A again, right? So this is a roundabout proof. So it's um, executing it, it's just simplifying the proof. So that's what it means. But usually um, um, proofs, um, these languages, they have uh, what is called a proof irrelevance. They, this, they separate what is a, you know, propositions and types. Basically the idea is t types, um, values are important but propositions, proofs are not really important. So, you know, it's just, um, you just, it's, it's, quite, it's, it's just an evidence that you've proved a thing, right, a proposition. What's most important is the proposition. So the proof itself, it doesn't matter, right? So usually these la languages, they um, consider um, different proofs as the same, and they do not reduce um, proofs. So proofs are, um, you know, just leave them unreduced but you know that they, they are actually normalizable because um, you know, this is proven by um, you know, some uh, mathematical theorem, you know, proof preservation. 
Yeah, whatever. The, the, other, the other interesting um, wrinkle to um, how uh, constructing proofs, proofs works in these languages is that you're limited to constructive mathematics. Um, so you can't use, for example, the law of the excluded middle where you can prove that something is so by proving that its negation is impossible. Uh, that sounds logical, but it, in, in proof systems, you actually have to construct an object of the, um, you know, that, that uh, inhabits the uh, type you're trying to, to, to reach. Um, Lean does allow for non-constructive, uh, so-called uh, so classical uh, logic, um, but those, are not, those proofs are non-computable. So, um, they don't correspond at all to any kind of, of uh, executable function. They're just a, a um, automated uh, logical inference. Yeah, so uh, do you understand correctly that we can take, uh, let's say, a Rust program and produce a ZKTC proof for that program? In principle, if you, what this would require is implementing the Rust type checker, let's say in Lurk. If we implemented the Rust type checker in Lurk, we could do this. Um, we're probably a ways away from, from that. That's a, that's a difficult project. The, the reason why we can do Lean um, and not Rust is because, uh, paradoxically, um, uh, the more um, expressive your, uh, your uh, type checker is, um, the simpler it gets because you don't have to deal with all these different special cases. So um, in, um, in, in Lean, um, there are only, what, three or four different con type relevant constructors. Um, and so the type checker is actually fairly short. Whereas the Rust type checker has to do a lot of work in order to be um, so constrained. Um, so uh, implementing the Rust type checker would be a very big, it would actually be a much bigger project than implementing the Lean type checker, even though the, less, the, the Rust type checker is uh, less powerful um, than uh, the Lean type checker. And they, we take some purely functional, like Haskell. Yeah, so uh, the Haskell type checker would be easier. The problem is which Haskell? Haskell has uh, a zoo of a di all these different extensions. I think we could do Haskell 98 pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, you can do a lot of things. Probably like w we'd have to map um, Haskell, um, but we have to solve all the um, unification problems, mm -hmm. and then you you know map into Lean. It's, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the other thing is that the reason why this is sort of this is a tractable a tractable project for a startup and not a decades long research endeavor is that um, we get to reuse. Uh, the the output of the lean type checker. So when we the thing that we're compiling to Lurk is not the parser or um, elaborator or unification uh, t type inference. Lean, we, so all the the source file lean source files run through the lean reference implementation, and what we ingest um, in you know the the the, the top of the Yatima stack is the fully um, elaborated terms. So um, the, the lean implementation, the lean type checker has already done a huge part of the work, um, and we only have to check that what it has done is correct. We don't have to construct uh, new things to fill meta variables, for example. So that makes the, the process uh, much easier. Um, and that's actually most of the work of building you know, a useful uh, language is you know, those very sophisticated um, quality of life features that uh, let a programmer do what they're trying to do and not spend hours you know, fiddling in you know, a stack of, I don't know, 30 nested lambdas. I was wondering, so you mentioned a bit uh, that people are starting to play with AI uh, using yeah. something like Lean to make proofs. Uh, how, how do you, it's, it's more like a, a gut feeling or intuition type of question, how do you imagine in the near future that the wetware compares to uh, silicon? Yeah. Um, mathematical proofs, because it's very, like right now you express like, oh, we can have a marketplace where we can right. have a spec of a program, you know, right. a type of a program, and then we can just, uh, okay, like whoever makes this, great. So. Right, um, well, so 
yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainties uh, with that, with how fast uh, AI is going to develop, but I'm uh, hopeful that um, the, at least at first, the way, how it's going to uh, work is um, AI uh, systems um, will be um, uh, working closely with wetware in systems like Lean. So you already have tactics metaprogramming, which are very simple search algorithms um, through the space of all possible terms. Um, and so I think it, that's the natural place for AI to, to be. So something like a really sophisticated GitHub uh, Copilot. Um, and from the performance of things like Copilot, I think there's still a really long ways away before um, AI systems are totally replacing um, human programmers uh, and mathematicians. Um, yeah, I think that, that uh, my, my guess is that um, to do all of the work of, of a programmer or a mathematician, including explaining the meanings of the, um, the proofs, which is really important because that's how you give clues to other um, uh, researchers or other uh, developers that there's something interesting here, that, that you should build on top of this. This is a fruitful uh, vein of ore in the uh, truth mines. You know, come, come help me excavate it. Um, that, I think, is an AGI complete problem. I mean, uh, when we have an AI that's capable not only of, you know, writing a whole uh, software project and also the, uh, you know, the, the, the documentation and also setting up a company and running the company and raising money, I mean, then we're all obsolete. So, but, but, but what a wonderful thing for the, for the, the economic uh, growth rate, right? Well, I, I'm not trying to put you in a corner here. What no, sure. What I'm trying to imagine is like, oh wait, like, we can actually produce mathematics with the help of AI at a rate that we would have never been able to imagine before. Like, right. This might be an option. This can really change the dynamics of basically everything. Right. <laughs> Um, but, but I think that like, just like um, the invention of the, um, the uh, hydraulic excavator didn't uh, put people out of work um, digging, it just meant that we could dig much more efficiently. We didn't have to use uh, picks and shovels. You could have one person, you know, a lot more stuff got, got dug up. A lot of, there's a lot of infrastructure that just wouldn't be possible if everything had to be done by hand. And right now we're doing things by hand. Um, so how uh, AGI impacts this, I mean, that's anyone's guess. But I think in the, in the near future, what, what will happen is that um, these kinds of very sophisticated uh, type inference systems um, will be more of a, uh, will be a human um, mental prosthetic and are gonna really um, uh, amplify uh, people's natural ability to uh, do mathematics and to write software. It's just an observation that the AGI also has to be able to give a 45-minute talk on the whole Oh, thing. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Probably over Zoom, though. Okay. Thank you, guys.